virtual reality has advanced far beyond those bulky headsets and bad tech. Now it's used for everything from selling real estate to treating PTSD. And joining me on the Kim Commando Show today is Joshua Cohen. And we're so blessed that he's here. He's the founder of Fat Pencil Studios, along with his team, a pretty talented visual experts. They're combining VR with other tech to create an experience that they call extended reality. And they're using it to help attorneys build better cases and solve crimes. And welcome, Joshua. Tell me about how you used VR to solve a drug bust that I read about online. Well, thanks so much, Kim. I really appreciate the opportunity to join you and your audience. And, um, you know, we, we've had a number of cases where we're able to use virtual reality. I think the, the one that you're talking about was a case in which uh, there was a shooting that occurred uh, after a, a drug deal gone bad and an attempt to collect on a debt. And uh, there was a witness that um, was reporting to the, uh, you know, to the authorities that he had seen the uh, defendant in the case square off and uh, shoot the, the uh one of the residents in the house in cold blood. And so that was their basis for going and pursuing an aggravated murder charge, which is a capital case that could uh, um, carry the death penalty in the uh, state of Oregon, where I'm from. And, uh, you know, in this case, some of the elements of the story about seeing this didn't really add up with the defense team. And so we used uh, a 3D modeling program called SketchUp to simulate what that witness could have seen from their position uh, in the living room. And it was clear that while they certainly saw the um, uh, altercation that led up to the shooting, there was no way they could have seen down the hallway where the actual shooting occurred. And so by using VR, you can build the scene and actually walk people through to say whether or not that, that could actually even be possible by using SketchUp? Right, so SketchUp is a 3D modeling program and uh, we use um, the best material we can get in any case to uh, take accurate measurements of the scene. And in this case, we did have a, a laser scan that was collected at the scene. So uh, the first step for us is, you know, using that information to build an accurate 3D model. And then um, we can actually bring that into uh, a virtual reality environment. We just started using a, a tool called The Wild, which is a company here in, in Portland. Oregon that also allows uh, virtual reality and collaboration inside those virtual spaces. So, um, it, you know, in this case, we can see not just what might have been able to happen, but also put on a, a headset and, and really feel what it was like to sit in that chair in the living room and how far you would have to lean forward to actually see down the hallway. And um, in, in this case, it wasn't it was clear it wasn't possible to see at the end of that hallway. You know what? That's really amazing. And so now when you bring us into the courtroom, do you have to supply the VR headsets? So there haven't been many cases where they've actually had headsets coming into the courtroom. And I think that it's probably going to be a long time and possibly it may never be the case where you'd have every single juror wearing a, a VR headset. Uh, however, I think in the, in the near, near term, there may be some cases where it would make a lot of sense to bring in, let's say, four headsets and let each of the jurors take turns visiting the scene of a crime or a crash and, and seeing with their own eyes what it, would, what it feels like to be in that location. That's, uh, I think, a capability that will be likely used in the courtroom soon. So now, did you start up using this Google tool SketchUp by saying, yes, I can use this to visualize crime scenes and help attorneys and cases and litigations? I mean, was this like a, something that like you just woke up with, like an epiphany one day? No, not exactly. Uh, I actually have a background in civil engineering and architecture. So the, work, the first work I was doing after getting the architecture degree was with real estate developers and, and doing uh, renderings of buildings and helping them visualize what was possible on different sites. And then when the recession hit around the end of 2007, that work completely went away. So in my um, sort of poking around at other things that we could use these tools for, I had an opportunity to work with a colleague who was an expert witness in an eminent domain case, which is a it's condemnation when the government takes property from a private party. And um, through the work that we did in that case, we, had an op we met up with some folks in the Portland City Attorney's Office and, and talk to them about what we could do with a different civil rights case that they were working on, a wrongful death case. And that's where it really dawned on me how we could use these tools to dramatically improve the uh, opportunities for collaboration 
and an understanding of what was, was going on and what could be seen at different, from different perspectives of a, of, a, of a location. That is just, you know, this is just so amazing to me that you took a, a tool kind of off the shelf, so to speak, and then combined it and personalized it and customized it for your use. The bus driver was fascinating to me. Is that mirror really in the bus driver's way, yes or no? Tell us about that case. Well, this is a, a case, uh, and, and I, I will say, we've worked on several bus cases. The first one we worked on was in Portland, uh, a tragic case where a, a TriMet bus um, uh, collided with five people in a crosswalk that were crossing with the, the green signal. Uh, but the bus driver was taking a left turn and just didn't see them. And I think, you know, one thing that really became clear as we developed the 3D model for that case is that the blind spot that's created by the combination of the side mirror and the A pillar on the left side, uh, for that driver who was short, that blind spot was about uh, obscured nearly 20 feet of crosswalk. So, it's, you know, a lot of people can get hidden in that area. And, you know, the bus drivers are trained to, to move back and forth, to rock right and left, to try to clear those blind spots. And the challenge, of course, is, you know, there's, there's always room for mistakes. Uh, maybe they didn't rock quite far enough. Maybe the people were moving in such a way such that they remained in that blind spot as the driver was trying to clear it. And so this kind of collision, um, it really, uh, it happens all over the country um, many times a year. I would say, you know, once a month I hear about a very bad uh, injury or fatality with a left turning bus. And so uh, we, we are trying to use these tools, not only to help uh, in particular cases to, to look at what really happened. Is it a blind spot or just driver error? But also to raise awareness that this is a problem that exists with okay. transit buses all over the country and better design could solve it. We need to fix that. I mean, it's a big problem. Yeah. So what's next for Fat Pencil? Love the name, by the oh. way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so, so we are looking into doing more with virtual reality, including, uh, you know, how can we do a, a, you know, refine our workflow for getting laser scan scenes available as quickly as possible for teams to view inside of a virtual environment and collaborate uh, with each other. And then um, I think the, the next thing is, you know, we just need to reach out to, to more attorneys and, and other um, technical professionals and let them know, hey, you know, just because uh, design tools or something you think that a, a designer should use and you maybe just um, you know call somebody when you're ready to go to trial actually uh, these tools are really things that can be helpful very early in a case and and so i just you know talk about that to folks and, and give them examples uh, every every chance i get well it's really amazing again what you've created it and i'm so thrilled that you're doing this because you know, somebody's recountment about something, a situation could be totally different than the reality. But by, but by using virtual reality and technology, we can kind of say, okay, this was really what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, one of the best parts of, of my job is just getting to hear some of the, the cases that people are working on and the, you know, the stories, every, every case that uh, comes up is a unique story. And I really enjoy uh, the, the process of coming up with ways to help tell that story effectively. Well, that's awesome. Hey, Joshua, thanks for being with us today and for sharing the way that you're using technology to make a difference in people's lives. I just love stories like this, and I know you do too, which is why you need to actually download my Commando app. It's absolutely free. Stay up to date on everything digital. Get the latest in tech, scams, security alerts, and so much more. It's free for Android at the Google Play Store or the App Store for iOS, of course. Just search for my last name, that's Commando, with a K, of course. Hey, thanks for watching. Now, a few things. Don't forget to click the like button and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. And for more digital know-how, check out all these other great links.